So my grandpa took me out, and the uh, first, first beast I killed was a rabbit. It mm -hmm. was sitting. It was about probably 10 yards away. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a recurve, and I'd done a lot of practicing, and I was shocked I hit the thing. <laughs> But I did a lot of practice in the backyard, shooting Nerf balls and, oh, yeah. and targets in the backyard, Cheerios boxes. <laughs> um, and my grandpa, uh, you know, made sure that I was the one who would butcher it. And, you know, I was like, ah, I was yeah. leery about touching this thing. It was still warm. Um, but, you know, I mean, he was he was proud of me. And he said, you know, he, and he came up and stuck an arrow in the thing, too. <laughs> From a distance, it's a great shot. But you know, I pin, I, I pin the pin the beast down. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and um, and it's I'm aware of how uh, distressing it is to talk about pinning something down that's alive like that. But you know, you're um, I'm a carnivore and I take part in the in eating meat. And I, my thought is that uh, it's a shame to kill something, um, but it's really a shame to have some henchman kill something for you and process it and feed it a bunch of antibiotics. And so I really don't like to eat red meat um, that, I, that I haven't killed and generally butchered myself. Yeah. I do uh, the butchering as well. There. Oh, really? Um, hunting with my gramps, I saw uh, probably maybe I had about six encounters with, with white-tailed deer hunting with my grandpa. Um, and loosed an arrow once at about seven yards and still missed. I was a kid, I was about 13. Mm -hmm. It was just such a close shot and I was so shocked that this doe came along right by me. Mm -hmm. um, but I never managed to kill a deer when I was with him and he never took a deer when I was with him either. He would love just to be out. We would hunt, you know, probably 10, 12 days a year at least. Um, and he was out there all the time, lived oh, yeah. um, in the camper, <laughs> and certainly after his wife passed, uh, he was out there all the time, all the time. And my uh, grandma June, um, grandma Woodruff. Uh, but I had this this feeling even then that like if I succeeded at, in taking a deer, that this would be like his passing of the mantle. And so I think there's a part of me that was resisting the idea of succeeding. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to Maryland, uh, when I was uh, um, must have been when I started teaching public school, like eighty. No, it was after. After writing seminars, maybe nineteen ninety two, three. Um, I got out with a bow by myself, and really had never. And I mean, the, the last animal I butchered um, was this rabbit I killed when I was 12 or so yeah. with my grandpa and he'd showed, he'd showed me and it's you know these, these, these bodies announce themselves to you about how they would be unzipped and you know, you know unseen from the nave to the chops oh, and, and from butchering the nave, from the nave yeah. up and you've got to do that in the field you know oh, really? I mean, to leave the, the, the gut sack in the field um, is good for the foxes they, they enjoy it and uh -huh. the raccoons actually will come come in sometimes as you're as you're butchering or as you're field dressing that's called field dressing field dressing um, but yeah the first one um, that I killed I brought home I didn't even field dress it and I uh, yeah, um, called up my buddy George Zinn who had taken me hunting, hunting a few times and had done some guide work and I have the this is before cell phones, but I had the portable phone on the ear. <laughs> and I think Melissa was preparing for a class and was watching Gone with the Wind inside. So there's some battle scenes. And then all of a sudden, there's this smell of like this deer being eviscerated. I mean, you know, the, the gut bag dropping into the garbage can in yeah. Baltimore City um, as I've got the phone on the ear. Yeah. And I'm learning, you know, how to address the. Uh, the really awful task of of of, uh, of gutting something that, that you know weighs a hundred pounds maybe and uh, and uh, it's it's warm and big and <laughs> dirty. I mean it's it's a dirty job, but it's 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 not dirty. It's it's wonderfully 
aromatic and clean and, and uh, um, that's one of those things that I think is hardwired. Uh, yeah. And so these days, uh, I you know I, I can butcher deer pretty quickly. Uh, most of the deer I, I take are does um, because that's good for the herd. It's good to reduce the herd. And it used to be, uh, you know, 40s and 50s, uh, there were campaigns um, uh, generally one would only shoot the bucks because it would be good for the herd. Mm -hmm. And now we're so overpopulated, we have to take the does out first. And I'm not a tro trophy hunter by any means. I've mm -hmm. uh, lucked into some easy shots on, on some good deer, some good bucks. Yeah. But generally I'm hunting for the table and to share. Um, and uh, I get uh, maybe eight, eight or ten deer a year. Um, this year I was down uh, maybe six, six or seven, because I was hunting with a recurve. So, I mean, the recurve, I have a reduced range. Mm -hmm. I have to be right on top of the deer. <laughs> and, you know, I don't have that luxury of coming to draw and waiting for, I mean, with a, with a compound bow with the wheels. Yeah. I can hold at draw for about almost a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and that's key, like, if you have a, a tree between you and the deer and the, um, you know, the things there, and you, can, you can come to draw and be ready to place that arrow and to wait for them to move that forward, like just, just forward. Press so you, you want to put it just behind that, you know, our arms protect our vitals. Mm -hmm. The same with the deer. So you wait for that foreleg to be forward and you hope that they're quartering away from you just slightly. Yeah. And you want to put it just behind the shoulder blade mm -hmm. and it should go through both lungs. And when that arrow goes through both lungs, you'll have, um, the deer will be down within 50 yards, 50 yards. Um, and that happens about 85 percent of the time that I'll that I'll actually see the deer drop from where I shoot um, so you got sometimes if you put the arrow a little farther back or if you only get one lung um, they can go for a long while um, just on the on the shock I mean they, they if, if they don't know you're there they'll think well I've, I've been stung by a bee or I don't know I mean it's, it's you know it's a it's a um, I know that sounds uh, as if I can um, put my head in the uh, place of a stricken deer, which is a, which is a terrible thing. But um, but you know they'll they'll run on instinct to uh, get away. Um, but it's generally death by drowning, um, the, the the blood filling up the lungs. Or if you make, as I often make, a hard shot, it's very very fast. Oh yeah. And don't go. Um, it's uh, hemorrhaging, and it's actually faster uh, and often quicker than a gunshot, which is I like too. I mean, I like that it's that it's quick. Um, I mean, there's nothing pretty about it, and there's nothing sporting in killing something that's not trying to hurt you. <laughs> um, and it's not for sport, sport. It's for um, food and mm -hmm. for the environment and. Uh, for the process and for the, you know, I mean, granted, um, I, I don't think sport is the word. I think there is great satisfaction in a good shot and watching a deer um, uh, get fooled that you've managed by luck and pluck to be close enough to put an arrow through. And, you know, the arrow's right there, it goes right, generally right through the deer. And, stays in the ground um, and uh, what about the um, I, I used to ask my grandpa all kinds of great questions like you know, <laughs> like, you know do they know you're coming um, does it hurt you know 